Welcome to Royal Priesthood Television. If you are reading from another version of the Bible, it may say cash for us. But this one is saying take us the foxes or take for us the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vine for our vines have tender grapes. There are a lot to be said about that little statement. You know that statement was spoken by Solomon when he was cutting his spouse, his bride. And when you read the book of Solomon, you will understand very, very well that this couple or this Two people, the young man being Solomon and that young woman too, love themselves. And in the peak of their love, King Solomon used a metaphor to talk to his spouse. The real meaning, the simple meaning of what he said is this, that, hey, my spouse, you see, how much we love ourselves. There is nothing you can do for me that I will disown you. I will say I don't do again. And I know in the same vein, you too, there is nothing you, I will do that will say you are no longer doing again. But mark you, there, you may offend me in a very big way and I may, I may overlook it, but there are things you may consider that they are very small, that they are minute, they are inconsequential that can bring problems. You may not know, and that's why I am telling you, in the same vein, he used this metaphor because of what is commonly known in the Middle East. What is commonly known in the Middle East as per that verse, is that the farmers in the land of Palestine usually have a lot of trouble with bears and foxes that ravage their crops. That happens every time. Every time. It is as if the bears and the foxes have special law for vines. And so every farmer in the land of Palestine, suffer loss because of this ravaging work of foxes and bears in the land of Palestine. So, what they normally do to prevent the foxes from coming into their garden or into their vineyard is to erect a stone wall around their vineyard and put broken blocks, broken bottles upon the topmost of the fence. Not that the big forces will not try to enter. They will. But because of the broken bottles upon the fence, the injury they sustained, the wound they sustained, while trying to forcefully enter the garden, prevented them from ravaging their vines and their crops. But what about the little foxes? The little foxes don't even attempt to climb the, the fence or the walls. Or the, they don't even attempt to say, let us, at least, we, we, are, we, are, not, we are not heavyweight. We can maneuver our way through the fence or through the bo broken bottles and jump inside. No, they don't even try. In fact, the real Hebrew name for a fox is derived from their character of digging around some things. Digging around some things that you think that, no, this place is well secure. Nothing can enter into this place. And so, because of the way they normally maneuver themselves in trying or in digging around something you think is safe or you think it has been adequately 
protected. That's why they derive their name uh, from. That's why. So Fox is not just a name. It is a character. You will remember that Jesus, when he was talking about Herod, when they came to tell him and say, hey, okay, Herod want to kill you. He said, go and tell that fox that yesterday I was working. Today I am working. Tomorrow I'm going to finish the work. So when he says fox, he's referring to his character. So the same thing, the word fox is really talking about the character, about some things. And so that's how the little foxes, because they have a, a, a technology by which they can dig around that fence and still penetrate into a garden, into a vineyard yeah, that the farmer's thought is secured and still ravage their, their crops and their vineyards. So therefore, but in what we are doing today, the little foxes in this context are some sins that we overlook. We consider them to be little. We consider them to be inconsequential or minor. And because sometimes we don't even know. Because sometimes the farmers, when they are in their vineyard, they usually look up, looking whether they, they will see some big, big uh, foxes trying to jump. And so they try to attack them. Why they are looking up at for to see those big big foxes they will not look down to see those small small foxes that penetrate into their garden so little foxes in this context are not big sins that are obvious that some people are even running away from they are small small sins inconsequential one in fact there are some there are sins that we even defend we protect ourselves in fact, there are, some of them are sins that we, 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 we don't blush for shame to express them publicly because we believe they are minor. We believe they are not even sins. We justify them by speaking like, who is perfect? They are sins that we don't blush for shame about sometimes. We defend them sometimes. We protect them sometimes. And because we do that, they will be ravaging our calling. They will be ravaging our lives. They will be ravaging our family. And they will be ravaging our ministry. And we may not know. And we begin to pray and fast. You devil that is doing this. They say, Satan, wishes and wizards doing this unknowingly that what is ravaging our calling? What is destroying our vines or our vineyard? Are not big foxes we are looking for or that we are attacking. They are little foxes that we, we overlook. We overlook. But from the onset, let me quickly talk very briefly about some sins that are not among the little foxes. They are not the little foxes. These sins are big foxes. In fact, there are no go area sins. They are touch not sins. However, even though many of us know that these sins that are big foxes are no go area and they are touch not sins, they are very common. Today, not only among the Christians, when I say among the Christians, even among church members, not even only among the church members, even among ministers. In fact, there is a serious issue in the church of God today. Ministers don't blush for shame about sin again. Even these so-called big foxes or big sins, they don't blush for shame. It has become something to celebrate everywhere. And sir, except something tragic, Something great happened. Of course, I have seen God doing it. The ministers, the young ones that are coming, will not know how to find the path of righteousness because of what they are seeing in the life of ministers. Ministers. 
notable ministers, big ministers in court. Yet, the Bible said the word of God, the program of God, the word of God stands sure. God knows who are those who are his. Everybody that calls or names the name of the Lord must not celebrate but depart from iniquity. So, these are no go areas. It's number one. All sexual sins. All sexual sins. Adultery, immorality, fornication. These things, when you say it, some people will be surprised, like pornography. That not only, I'm not talking about church members, ministers are doing it. Ministers, pornography, lesbian. I have a lot of things to tell you. Let me just tell you about it. I know a minister. I, would, I didn't know. I, I only know her, but I didn't know what was happening. What was, I didn't know the type of life she was living. A woman minister, a female minister, from a very big organization that I will not tell you. She has an hospital. And so, a day, a time and a day, every week, he invites ministers to come and minister in the hospital. And because people know her, people that are not sick from around will come to that hospital that day to relay it from the bread of life. Uh, dish out by all the strong, strong senior ministers she normally invites. And so, one of my church members, like a daughter to me, wanted to learn nursing. So we took her there to learn nursing. Only for the lady to come back and say, my yoga said, ah, you know, I am a jealous type of person, you know? I am a jealous type of person, you know? And I am a ma woman of God. Oh, go and tell your pastor to search me. And she will find out, he will find out that I am a real woman of God. And the lady came to tell me, say, ah, Kilo banye, wa? what is it? Why should I go and be searching? Find out. Then I knew that there was something. There was something. Eventually, she started trying to commit this evil with the young lady. Wherever they are in night duty. The lady sleeps on the bed. He will go and <laughs> gag her and began to do rubbish there. Rubbish there every day, every day, every day until we took the lady away from there. Now, I didn't tell anybody. I wouldn't have exposed her. I didn't tell anybody. It was he who went and told some, one of my churchmen, I said, that's your pastor. If it seems there is something between that your pastor and that lady she brought to me here. So, because I don't know why she could. That's why I opened up. I wouldn't have t t told anybody. I didn't intend to expose her. But because she went and spread it, I said, okay, now I have told you, call her to come. She never bothered to come. Now, that is a minister from a very strong organization. One of the topmost organizations in Lagos here in Lagos here and look at how then uh, some ladies who left they are now call my lady and say if we have told you, you will not agree everybody thought it's spiritual we that left the place knew that she's not what you thought she is and there are many people like that so lesbianism homosexuality all these things are big foxes that are no go area in Hosea chapter 4 Verse 11, the Bible says that wine and immorality and fornication usually takes away or capture man's heart. So as a minister, as a Christian worker, when you begin to engage in immorality, fornication and adultery, it, there is nothing you can do. It captures your heart. It captures your heart. There is nothing you can do about it. And that is why God will stop dealing with you. Number two, in Hosea chapter 5, verse 4, okay? Hosea chapter 5, verse 4. It says, they, they will not worship me. They will not come back to me. They may want to, they cannot come back. He said, because wardom, ushuale. He said, because the spirit of wardom is in them. 
Praise the Lord. Come on now. Praise the Lord. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. Why? For the spirit of wardom is in the midst of them and they have not known the Lord. That is what spirit of immorality or adultery does. You may want to repent. It's very difficult to, to be free from the spirit of fornication, adultery. They may want to, but to, to be free is very difficult. That is why there are no go area. There are no go area sins. They are touch not sins. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So they are not touch, touch not sins. So sir, if you, I know what some of us might be passing through. Now, if you are in such condition now, please sir, the only way of salvation is cry out. Is to cry out. You must have somebody you can cry out and say, I can't go me by me. Or else you will fight and lose the battle. You will go up, you will come down, you will go up, you will come down, and you will perish. You will perish. Sir, I am not just teaching you. I know what I have suffered. I know what I am telling you the truth. Among all the sins, the, the greatest one to be difficult, difficult to be free from is the issue of immorality and adultery. You better cry out if you are in that situation. You know, when some people are exposed, instead of saying, ha, thank you, sir, thank you, sir, the sin I cannot confess by myself is the one you have exposed me. And say, you have said the truth. He says, who says so? It's not like that. He will still become, he that confesses his sin will not prosper. He will not, pass, he will not prosper in his personal life. He will not prosper in his family life. He will not prosper in his ministerial life. That you continue to wallow in sin. So, he said, no go area, sir. If you have not fallen, don't try it. Don't say, I will enjoy the lady. I will enjoy the man. And I will come back and forgive. I, and, and ask for forgiveness. Yes, God may forgive you. But you are disqualified in the matter of the kingdom. You are disqualified. You may continue to exist, but you can no longer live. You know there is a difference between living and existing. For years, God said, why are you mourning for Saul? I have separated myself from him. But he didn't take him away from the throne. He was just existing. But he was no longer living. And there are many ministers like that. There are many Christians like that. Here, sir, there are many churches like that. They only exist again by name. God is no longer there. They are no, they are no longer living. All right? So, look at these scriptures. It says, for a prostitute. Proverbs 6.32. Or, or from uh, 6.26. For a prostitute reduces you to a piece of bread. You know what that means? It does not mean a commercial prostitute. He's talking about the engagement in immorality. It will reduce you to a piece of bread. What value does a piece of bread have? It means you will become an individual of no value in the matter of God's kingdom. You can still be in your church. You can still carry the Bible. You can still be doing what you are doing. But as regard kingdom matters, you are ostracized. You are ostracized. God will no longer have anything to do with you. Sir, if some people will see themselves, if they will see their relationship with God, they will cry for help. But because they still pray, because they still speak in tongues, because they still say, Holy Ghost fire, and one guy fell down, they think God is there with them. No, sir. No, sir. So, you don't have value before God when you begin to engage in the sin of adultery, fornication, immorality, or all sexual sins. Now look at it. 632 proverb. It says, But it man who commits adultery has no sense. Think about that. Has no sense. 
That's what the Bible is saying. How many people are doing that? How many ministers are doing that? And God said, a man or a woman that engages in such an act has no sense. Has no sense. He says, whoever does so, destroy himself. Destroy himself. People that have genuine calling, people that gifts were bestowed upon, adultery brought them down. Immorality brought them down. Answer, they are everywhere. The casualties are everywhere. You will see it in, the, in their ministry. You will see it in their family. You will see it in their lives. You will see it. You will see it. Praise the Lord. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. That is why it's a touch now. No matter your spirituality and anointing, when you begin to engage in immorality and adultery, you are following the path of death. The path that leads to the grave, it says it leads to the chambers of death. Now, mark the word, I will not do justice to that now. It says chambers. There are many ways by which, but that eventually it will lead to, to death or to hell. 